Yes, my name is Victor Von Doom, and I am currently running for President of the United States. I am the compassionate face of totalitarianism. So it's where's Doom. Well, we're Dead Dog Comics, and uh, right now what we're, we're hyping the uh, Night of the Living Dead Barber Zombie Chronicles, which uh, takes place about 12 years after the original movie, and we are going off the original movie, not the remake. Uh, you kind of find out what happens to Barbara after she gets drug off by the zombie horde, and, uh, and really how life is when two-thirds of the earth are covered with zombies, you know. It's kind of a, an inconvenience, to say the least. Um, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, wasn't Barbara that mousy broad that was in the movie? And, yeah, she was, but, you know, after you have to survive every single day fighting and shooting zombies, I mean, you, you got to toughen up after a while. We've got also some other projects that we're doing that are coming up. Uh, the Howling is uh, our next book that's to, that we're putting out. Um, and also an anthology book that's going to have a short story from The Howling and uh, Texas Chainsaw dead skin mask here and also book of the dead written by uh, tom sullivan so uh got a lot of a lot of good horror projects coming for sure now i'm grant gould i am an unprofessional seeking to be professional illustrator uh selling my own stuff sketchbooks and prints and stuff like that uh starting up a webcomic directed in.net which nice plug and uh i i created an Right, a series called Wraith, which is me and a bunch of online friends. We, a bunch of artists, get together and you know write novellas and illustrate it, stuff like that. I'm Mike May. I'm uh, here selling a, a anthology called Tales from the Inner Sanctum. It's a horror anthology. Um, I've got three stories in it, illustrated by various people. Um, my name is Tyler Page. I'm the creator of Stylish Vittles, which is a series of graphic novels that I'm working on. Um, it's more or less about uh, falling in love for the first time, kind of a coming of age thing set in the um, college years. It's semi-autobiographical, so it is based on a relationship that I had in college. Uh, and it's just, yeah, basically about um, that first love and kind of uh, what you learn from that and how it kind of messes up your life and uh, all the sort of uh, bizarre things that ensue from that. Okay, I'm uh, Sean Gebhardt, and I am the creator of Tall Hat Adventures, and i um, working on a new book uh, for Void Pulp Press called uh, Lost. It's actually going to be a serialized uh, story that's going to be in Void Pulp Press's comics. It's a new anthology. Uh, my name's David Bryant. I'm the creator of The, the Aviatrix, and I uh, also uh, do professional coloring. I'm working for Image Comics right now, coloring their new book uh, coming out this December called Battle Him, from the writer that brought you Hawaiian Dick. My name is Rana, and I'm a comic student at Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And this is one of the things that I do. It's a an anthology of short stories. They're all done by um, mostly kids, you know, age 18. Well, actually, one of them is 15 in here to about 30. And I also do. So I come out with that every once a year, and then I also do small comics and mini comics um, as Chibi Toaster Studio. And right now I'm also drawing bum stickers. They're stickers of bums and homeless people. My name is Chandra Ryer, and I have an online comic strip called The Siamese Fighting Fish. It's mostly a parody of everything. A lot of geek things, Star Wars, Harry Potter, comic books in general. So, um, and it's online in color. And the website is www.graystonestudios.com. I once read an interview with Steve Rude, who's considered, he's an artist artist. He's the type of artist that, uh, if you're an artist, you really, really appreciate this guy's work. And I remember him one time uh, during an interview talking about the intimidation factor of a blank sheet of paper in front of you. And what he was talking about is there's this thing that happens to us as we grow up, especially on the creative level, especially when we're taking that creativity and we're applying it in a way that's going to help feed us and put a roof over our heads, we start, uh, we start uh, bringing to the table sort of other people's judgment on it. I mean, all artists will tell you they're very self-critical. They're not that self-critical. They're thinking and their minds are working. They're not telling themselves that they suck that much. What they're saying is that they're playing in their heads the scenarios of people telling you just how much you suck. 
And that's what it is. And so when you go up to a piece of blank sheet of paper and you, now that you're trying to show it and expose it to the, pe- to the world, suddenly that creeps into your way of thinking. And for the first time, you look at a blank sheet of paper, not so much as the potential of what you're going to put on there. You look at it as like, oh, my God, now i got to fill this space up with something. Any artist will tell you that their best pieces of work, they don't remember actually drawing it. What they do remember is that when they would draw an arm that would kick butt, they would step back, they would look at it and they go, oh, that's pretty good. But if you were to ask them to remember actually trying to plan that out, it didn't, they, they don't remember that. And that's because you've gone into an area of that's just pure instinct. And I started, as I get older now, I'm starting to realize that when you work from pure instinct, it comes out a lot better. They, there's that saying that instincts are never wrong. I strongly, strongly believe. A real quick story. Uh, uh, two years ago, I met uh, Russ Heath at this convention. And I remember as I talked to him, uh, he was in, he's a, uh, in his 70s. And um, he was just going on and on during this conversation during dinner. And then at the next con I went to, I was talking to this fan of his. And I said, oh, I met Russ Heath at, this, uh, at the last convention I was. And he was going on and on about his Russ Heath stories. And he said that he remembers Russ Heath doing some, a sketch for a fan and that Russ Heath took a pen and just started drawing immediately. And it was a cowboy riding a horse. And he said, this guy just sat down and drew this man riding a horse straight off the pen. He didn't even think about it. And then when he told me that, it reminded me of the conversation I had with Russ at dinner. And the overall point that he was trying to make to me was at 70 years old, he knew that he didn't have much time to be able to do this in that much longer. And that he just wanted to enjoy it from here on in. The little time that he had left, he just wanted to enjoy it. And when you start to just try and enjoy the actual process of drawing, you don't question it as much. And you can only work from the instinct there. And when he said that, that was like, you know, being hit in the head, you know. I was just thinking, like, oh, I don't want to wait that long to get at that point. And that happened two years ago, and right now I'm drawing faster than I ever did. You can't tell by what I'm doing here. <laughs> but when I'm at home, I draw a lot faster than I ever do because I'm always thinking to myself, you know what, I want to try to enjoy this as much as I possibly can. And for me to sit there and try to plan everything out, when you try to plan things out, you're also thinking well, not just what you want to go right, you're always thinking what could go wrong, and that sort of prevents you from enjoying the piece.